Hey gorgeous, it's Carlene. Thank you so much for tuning back into my channel. In today's video, I have an Arabian haul for you. So I picked up some fragrances that I was curious about recently to include the newest Paris Corners Ayer Fusion Lychee. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts and seeing what I got, then please keep watching. Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. I am super duper excited to talk fragrances with you today. But before we jump in, I want to welcome all of my new viewers. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. On this channel, I talk luxury, I do review videos, I share my fragrance journey, and I also sprinkle in a little bit of lifestyle in my monthly vlogs. So if any of those things pique your interest, then I would love to have you here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also be sure to turn on that notification bell so you know exactly when my videos drop. All right. Let's get into it. So the first fragrance I picked up, by the way, these fragrances are from Frag Bar. And the first fragrance I picked up was one that piqued my interest. And I saw that they had travel sizes, so I definitely wanted to go ahead and pick up the travel size. This is a fragrance world fragrance called Caramel Macchiato, and I have the travel size here. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this fragrance. I'm using a box, and the reason why I'm not using my skin is because I've already been spraying the new Hair Fusion and my Kayali Eden Sparkling Lychee 39 to do a little bit of a comparison. So we're gonna spray this on the box here, but Caramel Macchiato sounded so good to me. Oh, I like the atomizer on this travel spray. It's pretty nice. Okay, so right away I'm getting spices. This smells like a spiced cookie. Oh, this is good. So at first, this smells like a spiced cookie and then some chocolate is starting to come through. Ooh, oh my goodness. It feels like the chocolate is spiked with some type of alcohol. So I'm gonna put the notes up on the screen, but initially at first blast, I'm getting spices, some type of spice. Maybe like a cinnamon and clove, something like that. To my nose, it smells like a spiced cookie. So I'm getting like a baked goods feel. And right after that, I'm getting a chocolate. So I'm not sure where the caramel macchiato is going to come in, but this is smelling really good. Okay, I'm going to spray this on the back of my hand. I don't have anything on the back of my hand, but I do have fragrance on my forearms. So I'm gonna spray this caramel macchiato by Fragrance World on this hand. Ooh. Mm. Okay, I don't know about coffee. I don't smell any coffee in here, but I definitely get something very baked good-like in here. I'm not even really detecting like a very strong caramel note, but what I am getting is something spiced, like a baked good. It's very sweet, it's creamy, but then it smells a little chocolatey. So let's look at the notes. Fragrance World. This smells amazing. The retail price for the full bottle is $38 and it's an 80 ml bottle and I paid $15 for the 10 ml, the travel size. So the main accords are plum and dates. Okay, the middle notes are cappuccino, cedarwood, and patchouli and the base notes are vanilla, caramel, and amber. I'm not picking up any patchouli or even cedarwood for that matter. But what I am picking up are the dates. So now that I've read that it's dates, I immediately, my mind immediately goes to Latafa's Hamra, which has dates. I feel like I'm starting to pick up on something similar to cappuccino, but it's not strong. The coffee note in this fragrance is not strong at all. It's very, very light. And I'm just now starting to pick up on it after maybe about a few minutes and it's starting to dry down on the skin. I am detecting something that I could associate with cappuccino. Now it's just getting warm and sweet. And that initial blast of like spices I got in the opening is not there. It's no longer there. I didn't pick up any plum in the opening, but definitely those dates for sure. And then something I would associate with cappuccino Cappuccino, but not a very strong coffee note in this fragrance here and then something sweet it started getting sweet okay and now the base is definitely getting sweet and sticky and so my experience is pretty similar to the note breakdown except there are some notes that I'm not detecting but you don't really start getting that caramel until the base and it does feel very rich and bold and sweet 
at the base like the notes indicate. So this is a really good one, y'all. This is a really good one. So I'm gonna keep playing around with this and see what the experience is like. An 80 ml bottle is $38, so very affordable, and this smells amazing. This would be perfect in the fall, but this is also a great layering fragrance that you could use in the spring, and really all year round. It's not like a heavy fragrance, and so I'm curious to see what a full wear of this is going to feel like. So I'm gonna spritz this all over for bedtime and see how this develops, and I will definitely be back to update you all <laughs> if things go well. Then a full bottle will probably be in my next Arabian fragrance haul, so stay tuned. So this next fragrance that I picked up was Noir d'Arabie. And this is by Pandora Scents, which is a Paris Corner line of fragrances. And the 10 mil for this one was $13. And the 100 mil is... $38 as well, but it is currently sold out on Frag Bar. This is supposed to be a dupe for Montal's Arabian's Tonka. I did get my nose on Arabian's Tonka recently and it smells amazing. I will probably pick up a sample of Arabian's Tonka at the mall next time I'm there and do a comparison for you all for that and this. So please stay tuned for that comparison. But let's go ahead and spray this. I smell that right away. <laughs> oh, this one packs a punch. Ooh. This fragrance, Noir d'Arabi, definitely reminds me of something. Now, obviously, it reminds me of Arabian's Tonka. I do think this is a very good dupe, but I'm not sure what else this reminds me of. But it does remind me of something else in my collection. So I'm going to take some time and try to figure that out for you all. But let's go ahead and spray this on, on this hand. I love these travel sizes. They spray out really, really well. You get a nice wide burst from the atomizer, a very wide coverage, and a light spray, which I love. So, so when I first spray this right away, I get a woody and powdery feel, a very sweet feel. So this smells woody and powdery to my nose. Yeah, so woody, powdery, sweet. It smells like there's rose in here, so let's look at the notes. So the notes are, actually the notes are not broken down by top, middle, and base. Instead, they're all together. So we have sweet, vanilla, amber, definitely was getting sweet. Warm, spicy, definitely. Oud, okay, that's where the woodiness is coming from. Oud, rose, musky, metallic, aromatic, and powdery yes to all of those things and from my recollection this does smell like the original fragrance and so i'm going to pick up a travel size of that this weekend and do a comparison video for you all this weekend but if you have this fragrance noir d'arabi comment down below and let me know how close you think it is to the original from getting my nose on the original i feel like this is an amazing dupe i'm not exactly sure exactly how close it is but it's definitely more than 80 percent similar so when i get these sample I'll really be able to test it out and tell you all but right now the performance on this is amazing when I first sprayed this out it met me and I was getting a woody powdery feel from it and it does in fact have oud and it is powdery there are sweet and warm spicy accords in here it does have a vanilla and amber it does have rose it says metallic which I'm not quite getting but definitely powdery a little bit aromatic very very woody so the oud is present but it's not an oud that's off-putting especially if you're like me and you like girlier scents this is not an oud that is manly it doesn't smell manly or harsh or super earthy there's no stink here and as a matter of fact the wittiness has toned down quite a bit oh this is gorgeous this is absolutely beautiful the way that the notes are blended makes it so that the rose isn't overwhelming the wittiness the oud is not overwhelming it's just a beautiful blend of all of those things so Mm, yes quality this smells quality so this is another one that I will probably end up picking up a full bottle of because it's amazing amazing stay tuned for a comparison video <laughs> and now for the moment that you probably have been waiting for I'm going to share my thoughts on hair fusion and how it compares to Kayali's Eden sparkling lychee 39 so just from the packaging we can see that this was definitely meant to be a dupe it has very similar packaging to Kayali's Eden Sparkling Lychee 39. Now in terms of the notes, at the top of Sparkling Lychee 39, we have lychee, of course. We have blackcurrant, apple, and Italian lemon. At the mid, we have violet, we have rose, and jasmine sandback. 
At the base, we have vanilla absolute, we have musk, we have amber, we have sugar, cedar, and sandalwood. So when you first spray out Eden Sparkling Lychee 39, you get a blast of fruits. So the lemon is not very prominent, but the lemon is there to give you that sense of effervescence, that sense of brightness, very juicy opening. And then I don't feel like either of these fragrances has a very prominent floral note, but there are florals here at the mid. What happens with this fragrance as it starts to dry down is it starts to get slightly creamy. I do pick up on the amber, the sandalwood, and that sugary component which makes the dry down of this fragrance slightly creamy, very sweet, and this fragrance maintains its sense of fruitiness, like that juicy fruit, into the dry down. So this fragrance starts out very juicy, very bright, very kind of like lifted, and then by the time it dries down, it's grounded a little bit with amber, sandalwood, and sugar. I feel like it gets sweet, slightly creamy, slightly warm, and the way this warms up on the skin is so beautiful. So the dry down isn't extremely super fruity and juicy. It does warm up a bit, but it never gets super dense or heavy or deep. It sort of stays very fruity with like a creamy kind of grounded base, and that's what I get from this. That's the experience that I have with this fragrance, especially on skin. So now just looking at the notes for Hayer Fusion, you can see that this was definitely meant to dupe Kayali's Eden Sparkling Lychee 39. So Higher Fusion opens up with that lychee, the black currant, the Italian lemon, and the apple. So exact same notes. At the mid of this fragrance, you get the same notes again. You get candied violet, damask rose, and jasmine sandbag. So very same notes. The base is once again very similar. You have sandalwood, vanilla, musk, and cedar at the base of this fragrance. The only thing that's missing from this base is amber. Now when I spray these fragrances out, they're almost identical. In the opening, they're both very fruity, juicy, very bright. With Kyer Fusion, I am picking up a slight greenness on the skin, and it's not quite as sweet as Eden Sparkling Lychee in the opening, but it does get sweeter. I think this goes through a very similar wear and transition through the notes as Kayali's Eden Sparkling Lychee 39. I feel like Kyer Fusion is such a close dupe that it's very difficult to tell the difference. So for me, the difference between the two of these fragrances is the dry down. To my nose, this dry down is creamier and slightly fluffy and it smells just a little bit richer. So that's what I'm getting on skin. And on skin, Eden Sparkling Lychee is slightly creamy but still very fruity on the dry down. So all of the fruits that you got in the opening of Eden Sparkling Lychee are pretty much still present on the dry down. You get a slight bit of creaminess from the sandalwood and the amber, but in this fragrance, in Higher Fusion, I feel like it's creamier, slightly fluffy on the dry down, and you don't get as much of those opening notes. So it's a little less fruity on the dry down than Kayali's Eden Sparkling Lychee 39. I have tested both of these out on skin for the last couple of hours, and that is my experience. They open up very similarly, except that there's a slight subtle greenness in Kyer Fusion, and Kyer Fusion is also slightly less sweet in the opening but they transition pretty much the same, meaning that both fragrances give you hints of florals and then they get sweeter and creamier on the base. And on the dry down, this one, Higher Fusion, is much more creamy. And although there is no amber in here, it's almost as if there were amber mixing with that sandalwood because this is a very creamy, sweet, fluffy base. So to give you an initial perspective or percentage on how similar Kyer Fusion is to Kayali's fragrance, I would say they are about 95% similar. Yeah, they are very close. And to put it in context, it's certainly close enough to opt for Kyer Fusion as opposed to spending over $100 on Eden Sparkling Light G39, unless you just want to collect Kayali fragrances and you just love the concept, you love the branding like I do, then yes, you might wanna go for this one. But if you're not looking for that per se and you just wanna get close enough to the original, do yourself a favor and go for this one. Very similar, except I prefer the dry down in this fragrance much more than Eden Sparkling Light G39. I think the dry down in Higher Fusion is absolutely delectable, delicious, and for a gourmand lover like myself, that is a huge, a huge benefit. I love the dry down of this fragrance. So yes, hopefully this video has helped you determine which one you might go for. I would say in my opinion, if you're looking to save and if you're not like a Kayali fragrance collector, 
I would go for this one. In fact, the dry down on my skin is a little bit more potent. Yeah, definitely. The dry down of this one is a little bit more potent on my skin. So on skin, this one definitely is still a bit stronger after the fragrance has dried down. So I will definitely be back with an update on this fragrance and how it wears. I will actually put an update in the description box for you all as well because I am going to be wearing this, giving it a full day's wear. So please check the description box for an update there. And then in the next video where we chat about Arabian fragrances, I will definitely be talking about this. I can already tell I'm going to be wearing this so so much because I love the dry down. It's a little bit creamier and fluffier and sweeter to my nose. All right beauties, thank you so much for still being here. If you are still here and you enjoy the video, then definitely give it a like on your way out as that really does help my channel. And also if you enjoy fragrance content, I make quite a bit of it on this channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. If you're still here and you don't have anything to say necessarily, I still want to know that you are here. So go ahead and drop me an emoji in the comments and thank you so much for being here. So friend, before we part ways, I wanted to share a couple of words that have been on my mind lately and those words are integrity and ability. As long as we are exercising our ability to our max potential and we're living with integrity, making the right choices when no one is watching, what's for you will be for you and what's for me will be for me. So what I mean by that is when we put our effort into something and we do it well, we do it with excellence, we do it with integrity. Whatever blessings you were meant to have, you will have in due time. If it's meant for you, it will be for you. Hopefully that thought encourages you as it has encouraged me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one very soon. Bye.